Good morning, everybody. Today, I would like to give you another Viosa tutorial. This time, I will speak about Exaplay. Exaplay is the new powerful playback solution by Viosa. What is Exaplay? Exaplay is actually a QLIS based high resolution player. That means you can play videos in a QList with soft or crossfade. And we support extremely high performance codecs, for example, HEP or Notch SC. You can play back Dome Master up to 8K in these scenarios. Exaplay is completely headless. That means all the interfacing works through a web browser. This is superb because on a playback machine, you don't need an external control monitor. And you can basically upload and control your instance through a regular web browser from almost any device. Of course, we also included some other control options, including TCP and OSC. Exaplay keeps it simple. It gives you the best quality playback with a simplified interface. This is perfect for fixed installations where you don't need the overboard complexity of media servers like 3D visualization, extremely powerful show control. You just want high resolution video playback. So it's perfect for fixed dome installations, for museums, for fixed mappings or rights. Of course, it does support all the also calibration. Let me show you a little bit about it. So when you install Exaplay, you will see it comes with this wonderful Exaplay icon and also in Viosa 6 installation. If you click Viosa Exaplay, it will open basically a web browser running the local host. Of course, if you are on an external machine, you need to replace this local host by the matching IP of a target system. Exaplay starts as a service. So within your taskbar, you will see Exaplay and an Exaplay service. By right-clicking here, you can launch additional parameters. For example, I can show the service interface that gives the opportunity to restart Exaplay, stop Exaplay. This service always is like a watchdog, making sure your playback is as possible and smooth as possible. Coming back to Exaplay. So Exaplay is quite easy to use. On the left side, you see media files. On the right side, you see a timeline. So the basic question for all media players, first of all, how to get media into my timeline? Well, there's two options. If you are on a remote system, let's say, for example, I'm using my laptop right now and my media server would be in a different part of the building, I can drag items here or upload items here and the items will be internally transferred through the network to the media server. The second choice, sometimes you just don't want to put hundreds of terabytes of hub data through the network. The second choice is that you can add media directories. If you add the media directory, it will browse the machine where Exaplay is installed. For example, you have a very fast D drive. You will simply define yourself a different path where you want to look for some elements and it will look into this folder and show you all data. On this machine, for example, I have a standard video path. This standard video path uh, contains some sample videos and already some videos that are uploaded. So you can either choose to upload it locally or browse the machine where Exaplay is installed or even browse a network drive. So. Let's see, I just uploaded a picture, I uploaded a couple of videos, and I can simply drag and drop them within the timeline. Of course, I can change positions and I can place them somewhere. Each element of a timeline has a couple of different options. So it has a small play item, that means I can play this item individually. It has a name, gives you some information about the duration. It has a loop opportunity. And we are very proud that we have a 100% seamless loop. You can control the volume level of each item separately. You can define a fade. This is by default a fade to black. But if you go to the properties, you can change this type to crossfade. So it's fading between the different elements of the timeline. 
There's also another option that says target. And before I start playback here, I would like to give you an idea about the concept of target. Now that we have items in the playlist, we of course want to choose where to play it. And in extra play, there are different possibilities. If you go to the target tab over here, it basically gives you an idea where to playback something. First of all, it shows you all the displays that are connected to your system. In my case, it's a laptop, so there's only one single display. I can also upload the also calibrations here as a target. So you can have different calibration, let's say a two projector panorama, and when you just need a warp screen. And you have a chance to define yourself custom targets. Custom targets can be pixel wise. Let's create a custom target because I don't want to have a second output here. I just want to show you the playback on the screen. So a target is defined by a certain position. Let's say we start in the top left corner at 1010. And when we have a size, let's make it 300 by 200, just a very small target. Defining yourself pixel targets is very useful for mapping purposes, for patching purposes, for LED walls, for multiple targets, and it works on local and remote machines. So let's see. We can take this target and either drop it on the playlist, so this means it counts for all elements, or we can even drop it on individual items. Let's do this. I now put the extra play target on all four elements and let's start the playlist over here you will see that the video we have a small fade in configured starts now at the certain left corner that are just defined as a target in the lower section here you see you have an overall control you can say pause playback you can say next you can control the volume levels and of course you get a little bit more preview information about what you are currently showing in thumbnails Let's create a second target. And we say this second target, for example, starts now on our right corner. And we make it a little bit bigger or smaller, actually. We drag the target now, let's say, on our second item. So if I start the second item, you see the target move to the right. You can see this in the playlist by this target section. So you can actually see what target it, each element has. Of course, you can also remove this target. This concept of targets gives you a lot of possibilities. What else? In the timeline, you can add images, you can add video. And for each element, you see, you can also add an audio file over here. That means you can get some audio files. And you can make sure that you also use multi-channel audio if you playback and code audio. Let's stop the playback for a moment. And you can easily do this by either do press stop over here, or I can just completely disable the show mode. So nothing is playing. In the timeline itself, I can also put myself some actions. Actions means that I certainly can put some jump labels to a certain cue action. I can say I want to jump to video number three. I can add a pause at a certain position. Um, this will currently be updated in the future with a lot of different possibilities, including sending UDP and TCP commands. Speaking of UDP and TCP, each element here is controllable by TCP and by OC. So it makes it very easy to put extra play under a certain control, for example, by a quest. Let's continue. I also talked to you that calibrations can be a target. So you can upload a VOSA calibration about multi projectors or multiple displays and simply also drag it on a playlist or on an item. This opportunity to have different calibrations can be very powerful, particularly if you have different scenarios or you have a rotating screen or you have a write. What else in Exaplay? Of course, you can load, save, and create new projects. In the configuration, you can see system paths. that basically shows where it's looking for videos or images by default. You can set some video settings if you want crossfade or softfade. 
You can choose some audio settings. Very interesting is the startup settings. Because as I said before, ExaPlay is particularly useful in fixed installations. And here you can choose whether ExaPlay should start with Windows, a certain delay, and select a playlist and the playlist item where to start playing from. Perfect for fixed installations. We also have some other options in here. But more useful for you at the moment is open the diagnostics. Because if we play back high resolution video, for example, I'm playing this video here. Sometimes I need to make sure it's placed very smooth, particularly on multiple projectors. So two possibilities. You can enable this on-screen stats, gives you the sync lines, makes it visually more proper to see if something is going wrong. On the other hand, you also can open the diagnostic. The diagnostic shows you for each single video if it's playing correct, what's the load time, what's the playback time, what's the process time makes it very easy to find out if you have some problems in your PC. ExaPlay is very powerful, as I mentioned. Even on my small laptop here, I'm able to play HUB at a 4K 60Hz resolution at ease. What else? Of course, you get some information here. We have an extended help desk. You can see your license. And up here, you can see if ExaPlay is connected. Particularly if you have an external machine, you just want to make sure that you see if this machine is always connected. If there are some network issues, you can press the sync button, but it should normally not be necessary because we have a permanent refresh. As ExaPlay is browser based, this gives us a lot of possibilities. First of all, on our local machine, if I just want to be local, I can transfer this web page to an app. In Chrome, it's very simple. I go to More Tools. I go to Create a Shortcut. I mark a mark, open as window. Let's call this Extra Play app. And in the same moment, Extra Play will appear as more app style. So no browser line, looking very slim and click on the same machine. Another option is that you can open Extra Play in a simple mode. The simple mode, this is still currently under development, removes all the timeline add elements and simply shows all videos and pictures in the timeline. And by the press of a button, you can dedicate a certain video. This is particularly useful if you leave something for an end customer at the end that can only choose certain videos, not should have a possibility to add. You see, I'm very proud of Exaplay. Exaplay is a very sleek and useful high resolution player that's perfect for a lot of fixed installation. It's also price wise very competitive and we can't wait to see your feedback. So I'm looking forward to you trying ExaPlay and I'm looking forward for your feedback and a lot of cool projects. Thank you so much.